Bavagung presents six things that will make your voice sound perfect. The quality of the mix very much depends on the quality of the voice track. One of the biggest mistakes that new video creators make is neglecting the audio recording quality and then trying to fix it in post. Listen to the speech in these videos. Welcome to the first video. Bringing you tools, training, awesome creators. Today we're going to talk all about the creative service provider. You're Those welcome. are all from very popular YouTube channels and you'll notice that they all have pretty excellent audio quality. The decline in cost of semi-professional audio gear has made average viewers very sensitive to audio. This means your sound needs to be at the top of its game. This episode will go through several things to consider in order to improve the audio quality of a video shot indoors. We look at six different ways you can ensure voice recordings are as good as they can be. Focusing on acoustics, microphones for low, medium and high budgets, post-production dialogue editing, noise reduction, equalization, and compression. Before we continue, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. Acoustics. Before we even talk about gear, let's talk about your location and the things you should avoid in advance, like noise. It's much easier to prevent additional noise from being picked up by the mic than trying to remove it later. Noises to consider are external noises and reverb, which is basically the reflection of your voice pounding into the walls and returning with a slight delay in your microphone. How to avoid noise problems. When it comes to noise, simple things like closing the windows and doors and turning off the AC, if possible, can prevent noises that are hard to remove from leaking into your mic. For example, birds, cars, and people shouting. If you're outside, check the area around you. If there's a huge transformer, a train or aeroplane every five minutes or a lot of people talking and shouting, it might not be the best location in terms of audio capture. The next thing to avoid at all costs is reverb. Natural room reverb is one of the most unlikely things to be fixed in post-production, so you better make sure your room is relatively dry. In the sound world, a dry room means a room that has low noticeable reverb. To check how much reverb there is in a room, do a clap test and hear reflections. Try to choose a room that has a lot of furniture in it. Things like a couch, a closet, a rug and other significant objects are great at reducing audio reflections. An even better alternative is to treat your room acoustically. It requires investment but it will massively improve your audio quality. You have a few options regarding acoustic treatment. 1. Acoustic foam. This is the less expensive and most recommended solution for non-professional studios. Acoustic foam will provide a nice decrease in audio reflections if installed correctly. 2. Fabric wrapped panels. This is the more expensive solution that professional sound studios use to reduce room reflections. Those panels are made of a wooden frame filled with sound absorbent materials like mineral wool and rock wool and covered with stretched fabric. Microphones. Once you make sure your room is dry and quiet, you'll have to choose a microphone. There are thousands of microphones available in the market and it really depends on your budget which one you can choose. Let's go through a quick overview about lavalier, shotgun and dynamic microphones. Low budget, $50 to $240. There are microphones from Rode Company called shotgun mics because they can efficiently catch audio from one direction. One of the most popular options is the Rode Video Micro. Since it connects to the camera, it uses the camera battery and you won't have to deal with audio video syncing issues during post-production. Relatively small and portable. No need to carry an additional mic stand. Cons. Basic audio quality. You have to be right in front of the camera to record sound. It's fixed to the camera, so if you move away from it, this mic won't catch your voice well. If the camera is far from you, it will catch reflections from the room, reverb, so you have to be quite close. You can also consider Blue Yeti USB and Blue Snowball microphones. They're pretty big, but they connect directly to your computer via USB, making them a handy plug-and-play device. Medium budget, $200 to $500. In this price range, you can get a lavalier microphone like Rode Wireless Go and Rode RodeLink Filmmaker KitLav mics. Pros. Lavalier mics catch voices very effectively without catching too much noise. You can hide them under clothes. Rode Wireless Go has no cables, which is excellent. Cons. In general, lavalier mics produce sound of a lower quality than good shotgun mics. 
If the speaker touches their shirt, it creates a very noticeable noise called rustle, which can be tough to remove. They'll come round. You can also purchase good shotgun mics like Rode NTG4 Plus and Audio-Technica AT897, which sound great. Those mics require an external recorder like Zoom H6. Pros. They can be placed right above the speaker's head, aim straight to their mouth and outside the frame. Produce a high quality recording in the right environment, a quiet and dry room. Cons. Requires an external recorder with preamps which will incur additional costs. High budget. $550 to $600. Investing around $600 will allow you to buy some really nice gear. The Sennheiser G4 is an excellent lavalier mic. Audio-Technica AT4053B. This is an excellent sounding shotgun microphone. Shure SM7B. Created for radio broadcast and regularly used by Joe Rogan, this is one of the most iconic microphones for podcasts and radio shows. As a dynamic microphone, it requires a lot of gain from a preamp. If you use recording devices like Zoom H6, you might consider purchasing a device called Cloudlifter. This device will let you record at the right level while lowering your noise floor. Post-production. Dialogue editing is a profession. Years of meticulous work are required to acquire the skills needed to produce a good dialogue track. Removing unwanted noise manually and finding the right balance between noise reduction and clarity is crucial to achieving an excellent dialogue track. Nevertheless, if you go through these simple steps, you'll improve your editing skills drastically. Manual editing. It doesn't really matter what software you use as long as it has basic editing features like volume automation and cut and trim. The first thing you should do is manually shape the volume automation lane so that the quiet syllables are boosted and the loud syllables are toned down. If you don't want to deal with each syllable, at least make sure that every beginning of a sentence right after a breath is taken is at the same level as the end of a sentence. You'll probably notice a decrease in energy along each sentence. Breath. A few plugins like Waves D-Breath remove breath manually but don't be tempted to buy them. They don't work too well and you'll probably spend significant time checking that they work correctly instead of actually doing the work properly yourself. Instead, try to listen to your audio recording as it is for the first time. Is breathing between sentences too noticeable in specific places? You shouldn't just remove all the breaths. This will make the speech sound unnatural and alienated. Instead, try to reduce them by 30 to 50% and do A-B tests to see if it sounds better. Here's a quick tip. A faster way of editing breaths is to cut all of them, paste them to the channel below at the exact same positions, and adjust the channel's volume. Remove clicks. Mouth clicks are sounds that your lips produce when parting to breathe before speaking. It is a popular program. Uh, There's nothing more irritating than hearing mouth clicks popping in your ear while listening to a podcast or tutorial. Make sure you remove all these clicks between sentences. This can be done manually. It is a popular program. Uh, all that I want to do. It is a popular program. Uh, all that I want to do. Or automatically with plugins like Isotope Mouth D Click. Popular program. Noise reduction. The simplest and easiest way to reduce background noise, like AC background noise, is to use an expander. Most of the editing software has an expander. Usually, just by adding one in the insert slot of the channel, you'll notice a significant reduction in noise levels. Glad to help. You have no idea what I had to go through to get here. It all started in a lab. Scientists from Teva's Discovery Labs were looking for a molecule that could treat a certain disease. If using the expander is not enough, the next step would be to try the noise reduction tools available in your software. If you have Audition, for example, you'll have access to very high-level noise restoration tools. Glad to help. You have no idea what I had to go through to get here. It all started in a lab. Scientists from Teva's Discovery Labs were looking for a molecule that could treat a certain disease. If you feel that your tools don't improve your audio quality, try downloading trial versions of third-party plugins from known companies like Isotope RX and Waves and use them on your clips. Those professional tools are used by sound designers and editors worldwide and have a steep learning curve. Glad to help. You have no idea what I had to go through to get here. It all started in a lab. 
Scientists Having said that, spending too much time and money might not be the best solution possible. If the audio quality is low, consider re-recording your session or outsourcing your sound editing work to a professional sound editor. EQ and compression. EQ and compression are the most basic and essential tools that exist in the sound design world. To put it bluntly, compression combined with equalization with the right ears can make your voices sound radio-like. The equalizer is adjusting the balance between frequency components within an electronic signal, and with a few slight tweaks, it can help you improve your sound dramatically. This is an EQ with a spectrum analyzer that shows a representation of all the frequencies of a signal between 20 Hz and 20 kHz, the human hearing range. Sounds like you need Silk, the database supercharger. Sounds like you need Silk, the database supercharger. Sounds like you need silk. Every voice should be dealt with differently, but overall, a curve that looks similar to this will make your voice sound more present, warm, and crispy. Compression. The compression is used to reduce dynamic range. In other words, it can make your voice sound awesome by reducing the volume of loud sounds or amplifying quiet sounds. It can also significantly increase the average signal level without clipping. Sounds like you need silk, the database supercharger. Sounds like you need Silk, the database supercharger. Sounds like you need Silk, the database supercharger. Last tips. Don't forget to clap. If you're using an external recorder, you will have much less headache syncing your audio and video if you just clap before starting. Test. Make a short video of a few seconds and test the audio to ensure that everything works and sounds good. Get closer. Speak close to your microphone. They tend to catch low frequencies better from a close distance. Don't pop. Always use a pop filter when recording voices. Don't clip. Clipping happens when the preamp gain is too high for the input loudness level. Try to talk louder than usual when testing your audio to make sure you won't clip. And, of course, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe.